everyone in the last class we finished off the motor system and in the last one we discussed about the differences between the upper motor neuron lesion and lower motor neuron lesion there are so many differences that you can watch in the previous video but one point is quite peculiar regarding the upper motor neuron lesion normally we say the lower motor neuron lesion reflexes will be lost why because we know there is cut in the lower most lower order neuron so there will be the loss of the reflexes but in the case of the upper motor neuron lesion we just say general law is term we say the reflexes are exaggerated but that's not the complete truth the complete truth is deep tendon reflexes they are exaggerated but superficial reflexes they are lost so have you ever wondered why the superficial reflexes are lost and the deep tendon reflexes are exaggerated so today's class is regarding this one like first of all to understand this thing we need to go back to the superficial reflex and the deep reflex like what is the difference what is the basis upon which we call a particular reflex as the superficial one or the deep one it is based on the receptor the sensory receptor like i will give you an example of knee jerk the knee jerk is it's an example of deep tendon reflex right but the flexor withdrawal reflex or just withdrawal reflex i'll write down withdrawal reflex it is an example of superficial reflex so on which basis we are saying that withdrawal reflex is the superficial one but deep tendon reflex is sorry the knee jerk is the deep tendon reflex knee jerk if we go back like say what we do in the knee jerk we hit the tendon of the quadriceps femoris we will hit the tendon of the quadriceps femoris so when we are hitting the tendon of the quadriceps femoris this muscle we are hitting over here this tendon so what is happening as we all know there is muscle spindle lying within this skeletal muscle this is the muscle spindle okay these red one they are the extra fusel fiber extra fusel fiber and this one they are intrafusel fiber right intrafusel fiber intrafusel fiber now when we are hitting the tendon with the knee hammer what is happening it is stretching this part it is stretching the muscle when we are hitting it we are stretching it so what happens this muscle spindle this muscle spindle it acts as a receptor so the receptor this stretching is carried by 1a fiber that is around this muscle spindle so 1a fiber will carry the sensation to the spinal cord okay it will carry the sensation to the spinal cord now it will synapse within the muscle it will synapse within the spinal cord sorry within the spinal cord with alpha motor neuron right say this is the alpha motor neuron that will come back now the alpha motor neuron innervates extra fusel fiber this is alpha motor neuron this innervates extra fusel fiber and the gamma motor neuron they are also they might get connection from this one or from the higher center from the higher center it will come to both the alpha as well as gamma so first we will talk about the higher center afterwards first we will cover this thing the alpha motor and the gamma motor neuron now what is the ending point of the gamma motor neuron gamma motor neuron ends at this outer segment of the muscle spindle this outer segment of the muscle spindle and as we all know the outer segment of the muscle spindle it is contractile it is contractile this part is contractile so when the gamma motor neuron gets stimulated 
Initially, we hit the muscle tendon with the knee hammer. And after hitting the muscle tendon with the knee hammer, there will be stretching. And that stretching of the muscle spindle will be carried by 1A fiber. It will go up to the spinal cord, to the concerned segment, will form the synapse with alpha motor neuron. And alpha motor neuron will innervate the extrafusal fiber. And ultimately, the muscle will contract. That is a simple flowchart or simple diagram of a reflex, stretch reflex, right? Then, there comes gamma motor neuron too. It might get also stimulated from this part or from the other things. When the gamma motor neuron gets stimulated, then it innervates the contractile part of the muscle spindle. So, because of the innervation of the contractile part of the muscle spindle by the gamma motor neuron, they get excited. This part will contract. Now, this contraction will move this way and this end will contact this way. So, what will happen to inner segment of the muscle spindle? It will again get stressed. Right? It will again get stressed. So, because initially just we started with the knee hammer, it will again get stressed. Again, the sensation will be carried by these and then again the alpha motor will get activated. Alpha motor is trying to reduce the sign when the extrafusal fiber because all of them entire of the extrafusal fiber they are contractile so it will try to contact in this way but gamma motor neuron is making the muscle spindle to contact this way that's why the alpha gamma coactivation occurs and this is the diagram for the deep tendon reflexes right now what happens in the case of superficial reflex superficial reflex is gamma motor neuron it is totally cut off. Why? Because just take the example of withdrawal reflex. Whenever like we are in the kitchen, we hit a hot pan, what we do? Immediately our hand will withdraw itself. So who is the one? What is the sensory receptor which perceives the sensation of the increased temperature? That, that sensory receptor for the pain there will be the increased temperature because that increased temperature will lead to the pain so pain and temperature these receptors they are not located within the muscle they are located in the skin that's why that withdrawal reflex is called as superficial reflex so the reflexes are classified deep and superficial based on the location of their sensory receptor in the case of the stretch reflex, muscle spindle, is, it is located deep in the body. That's why deep tendon reflex, deep reflex. In the superficial reflex, the pain and temperature, that one, that sensory receptor is located within the skin. So that's why it is called a superficial reflex. Now coming to the superficial reflex, to the diagram that pain and temperature is carried via A delta and C fiber, right? A delta and C fiber it carries to the spinal cord. Now within the spinal cord, they will end at the alpha motor neuron. Alpha motor neuron. And alpha motor neuron will innervate this extra fusal fiber, right? The extra fusal fiber, this sensation is coming from the skin. This is the skin part. Okay. Within that the muscle is located. So we like there is a painful stimuli or increased temperature, it will be carried by the A, delta and C fiber from the superficially, it will form a sinus with the alpha motor neuron and alpha motor neuron innervates the muscle, muscle will contract and there will occur the removal, the flexion of the hand, right? So that's why there is no contribution to the, by the gamma motor neuron in this one. Now, coming back to upper motor neuron lesion. Upper motor neuron lesion is like say I in previous class I have discussed about that flow chart that's given in the genome. I told you that's given in the genome that's regarding the reticulospinal tract and the corticospinal tract, how they innovate. So I'll put the link of that video in the description of this particular video. Okay. So you can go back and watch in the details. But a brief overview regarding that one, I'll tell you. Reticulospinal tract. There are two types of the reticulospinal tract. One was medial reticulospinal tract. The second one was lateral reticulospinal tract. Now the medial reticulospinal tract. This was excited tree. This was excited tree. To whom? 
it was excited to gamma motor neuron it was excited to gamma motor neuron and this lateral reticulospinal tract it was inhibitory it was inhibited to gamma motor neuron that is one thing and both of them the medial reticulospinal tract or the lateral reticulospinal tract they are innervated by the cortico the tract the nerve fiber which are coming from the cortex and ending at the reticular so we can call them cortico reticular tract cortico reticular tract was stimulating both of them both of them that's the one scenario regarding the gamma motor neuron now from the cortex the tracks which directly come from the cortex and end at the spinal cord they are called as cortico spinal tract cortico spinal tract now these cortico spinal tract they are innervating alpha motor neuron they are innervating the alpha motor neuron and they are stimulatory to alpha motor neuron stimulatory to the alpha motor neuron now what is upper motor neuron lesion upper motor neuron lesion is the lesion of the tract say if we cut this thing like in the previous class i told you about the decorticate and decelebrate rigidity these things so if we do a cut over here this point now what will happen to the alpha motor neuron and what will happen to the gamma motor neuron alpha motor neuron was receiving excitatory from the higher center so there will be loss of the excitation so what will happen to the alpha motor neuron activity it will be reduced and if we go back to the superficial reflex superficial reflex is concerned with the alpha motor neuron gamma motor neuron does not play any role in superficial reflex so that's why in the case of upper motor neuron lesion superficial reflexes will be lost superficial reflex will be lost now coming to gamma motor neuron gamma motor neuron if we cut off this section what will happen to the lateral reticulospinal tract both lateral reticulospinal tract as well as the medial reticulospinal tract they won't get stimulatory signal from the higher center and if the lateral reticulospinal tract is not getting stimulation it won't be able to release the neurotransmitter inhibited neurotransmitter and it won't be able to inhibit the gamma motor neuron right now the question arises is a medial reticulospinal tract as i told you they are self stimulating there are the neurons present in the medial reticulospinal tract the cell bodies located in the upper cone they automatically sing they they are like we can say like the sa node is present within the, within the heart they generate their own impulse similarly these neurons they generate their own impulse automatic if there is no stimulation if there is stimulation that auto generosity like the automatic generation of the impulse will get exaggerated if we remove still they are st active they are releasing the neurotransmitter and the other thing was they also receive the sensation via anterolateral spinothalamic tract from the peripheral part of the body so we have just cut in the upper motor neuron lesion this tract not the ascending one so it will keep on stimulating this one so ultimately what will be the effect and effect of upper motor neuron lesion on the gamma motor neuron they will get more and more stimulated because we have removed the inhibitory part and the gamma motor neuron plays the role in deep tendon reflexes so because of the gamma motor neuron discharge increased gamma motor neuron discharge what will happen it will make the contractile peripheral end of the muscle spindle to contract that will get contracted then there will be the stretching of the muscle fiber that muscle fiber will that stretching of the muscle fiber will that sensation will be carried via one fiber and those two fiber fiber number 2 that's like the sensory afferent neurons carrying the sensation from the muscle spindle to the spinal cord 
and ultimately alpha and gamma motor neuron will make the muscle to contact more and more. That's why deep tendon reflexes are exaggerated enough for motor neuron lesion, but the superficial reflexes are lost. That's all.